Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing lure making TV here on YouTube and I have some really cool goodies here to show y'all real quick before we get started. This is the new Jinja Ninja mold of course just recently launched uh, with angling AI molds and I'm having a crawfish boil next Sunday and you can tell I am ready. So I poured up some uh, sort of like red craw here, like Louisiana craw. I don't really know if you would call this Raven Red, but this just kind of goes to show some of the detail that you can put in this mold and, uh, and what a challenge it is to hand pour something this um, complicated in what's relatively a small mold. Um, so we're gonna be using this mold again today and I really like what I did with the tails. All those little orange dots are hand poured and I uh, kind of blended some brown and reds in there. So a really, really cool set of baits. However, we're gonna show you um, some remelt fun. So I've done a lot of videos where I take, you know, a huge stack of these remelt pucks and I throw them in a pot and melt them all together to get just some ugly random color. Well, today we're actually gonna show you how to use your remelt pucks to try to make something good, right? You don't always have to just mix everything together um, and just see how it comes out. You know, you, you save your plastic for a reason. And today we're gonna try to actually take this mold and some remelt pucks and actually try to make something really cool. So that is the, um, I guess, object of today's video is a different take on using your recycled plastic. Yeah, this is gonna be a challenge. I'm trying to think of what I can do with these colors here to try to make something really neat in the ninja mold. You know, these were very complicated. Um, so we're gonna to try to do something on par with that in terms of complexity, but we have to use remelts. I'm not gonna get any new plastic out, maybe some new plastic for white pearl to pour in the bellies, but, but that's it, that's just filler. The entire color scheme is gonna be from these remelts. So I will meet y'all back when I have a plan. All right, so the molds are laid out and here are the colors that I've selected. We have a chartreuse, we have sort of a uh, emerald sort of green, I guess you could call it, a real brown green pumpkin. We have some red with some little flake, we have some purple, and then we have black. So just like I would layer my swim baits, I'm probably gonna start with the black. These right here, those started with the black layer. Um, so we'll probably start with some black and then fill the colors in as we go and uh, see what happens. And before we get everything started, uh, the plastic, all of these remelts today is remelted dead on plastics craw tube blend. And then of course the mold today is a uh, collaboration mold between myself and uh, Angling AI molds. And it is the Jinja Ninja. So with that out of the way, we're gonna start the first color. All right, I have no idea what pattern we're gonna pour, but we're just gonna start. And I'll try to do this around the camera so that we can see. One thing that I've really enjoyed doing in this mold is pouring black just in the backs of the wings. So we'll start with that. This is a look that I've really started to like. So just like that. And um, you know, whenever you see a really complicated um, pour in this mold, you know, it's many, many little precise uh, color placements just like that. And I mean, you have to do that for everyone. There's, there's no way to cheat the system here. You have to tilt the cup. By the way, for all of you hand pouring enthusiasts out there that might want to support the channel, I have an awesome new t-shirt on my Teespring, certified cup tilter to uh, celebrate the hand pouring lifestyle. So check that out. Your purchase there helps support what we're doing. So. That's how I like to start a lot of these. And you know, I'm still learning this mold. There's a lot that I have yet to pour with this thing, but um, you know, there's, there's so much that I want to pour with it. You just kind of can't 
really do it all. And uh, maybe we'll pour, maybe we'll pour some stripes. How about that? And this is always tricky to get like a even pour, in an even stream of plastic, right? So you can see that was not even. One side has a lot more plastic than the other. So in this case, and this is a little bit more difficult on camera, of course, but I would just peel that off and try again. So let's see if we can get one. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot more even. So one side isn't just way too too much um, or, or way too too thick. So if we look at it this way, it's more or less an even line. All right, so we actually went ahead and um, poured just the tips in black. So we kind of have these, we basically have like a three tier. We have black in the back of the wings, black midway through the uh, tail, and then black tips on the tail. So now we want to get a little bit of black in the body. And uh, similar to the release video of this mold, we're again going to pour crossways, you know, so you can actually, so for example, well, heck, maybe we'll do this. You can just place it individually, right? Just tilt it, just, right? Place it right there, let it run up a little bit, right? So you can just place it there and sort of like polka dot the mold, right? You don't have to pour across. That's just, I like, I like the look of pouring across, but you can just sort of like polka dot it, right? And what I mean by that is, now we'll pour one, ah, that, that wasn't quite done setting up. Now we'll pour one on this side, right? That kind of is the opposite of that one. Caddy corner to it, right? Now there's so many ways to, to add little bits of color into these things, okay? Right, so now we have that. And so I'll show you um, this contrasted with the uh, cross that I did. So on this one, you can see a clear pattern where it was poured all the way across. So you kind of have these little black um, legs there that kind of flow into this fatter part, right? It goes all the way around it, so to speak. You know, this one won't be like that. That's more splotched, if that makes sense. So, you know, this, again, you know, one thing I like about this mold is it kind of challenges you to do different things. So maybe we will go with the splotch instead of the stripes. How about that? That's something new. I haven't done that yet in this mold. So we're going to go with that. All right. So they kind of look like cows, right? Just little splotches of black here and there. But um, anyway, so that's sort of what we're going with. Those kind of actually turned out to be opposites on the splotchy part. So that's just the black on just one mold. We got to do the rest of these. So I'm going to attempt to reproduce that four more times and uh, then we'll meet you back and then we'll see about what we can do with some of these other colors. All right, so I got a few of these poured and then look who showed up. Happy Jack is back. Yeah. He hasn't been on the channel since what, 2016? Since when, 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 when I first started? Since you're irrelevant. And he hates my wooden jig from that video. He says it's garbage, which, uh, I, you know, hey, I could catch a fish on it. But apparently I'm getting interrupted. So we're gonna stop the pour for this video right now. We're gonna make some stuff. We're basically, we're gonna do all the things that Happy Jack wants to do. That's right. Because he's coming in here acting like he pays the rent. You know, like, did, 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 you, did you buy these Pyrex cups? Did you buy the glitter? No. All right, so does anyone here remember the grocery store video where I literally raided the, uh, raided the spice aisle Happy Jack apparently doesn't watch my videos anymore because he had no idea about the paprika baits. So we're gonna use this as the color base. We're gonna throw some blue in it and then some gold. And we're gonna be using the 13 inch AI worm. So I'll meet y'all back. Uh, we're gonna be using two blend because a big worm, you want a firm plastic. And uh, I, you might be the first person to ever catch a bass on a paprika worm. I'm because I'm, I'm the only person that I know of that's made these, but I've never taken them fishing. All right, so this is paprika, blue flake, little gold flake, and then some uh, medium black flake. And Happy Jack, that's actually an amazing color. It smells terrible. It smells terrible. All right, make the worms. Go. You're up. I haven't done this. It doesn't matter if you haven't done it. It's, it's like riding a bike. I haven't even used one of these. It's like riding a bike. 
Yeah. You got this, pal. I didn't fill it all the way. Not all the way. You're only doing two cavities. You all hear that laundry in the back? That's complete crap. Uh, put the nozzle in the thing. This thing's weird. But you got to put it in the hole, dude. This bro. Now inject, yeah. Push it till it stops. Yep, you got it. Happy Jack sucks, dude. I made a sink out. How do you explain this? That looks like that uh, six cents clout worm. That's what I was trying to get with. That looks terrible, is what it looks. Now that's better. Booyah. Big old 13 inch paprika worm. All right, y'all, check this out. Got a nice stack of them. Hard to believe that's from the spice aisle at Publix. Anyway, nice little break. Happy Jack showed up. We might make a few more things, and then we're gonna get back to some uh, hand pours. All right, everybody, so we didn't have much of this purple remelt, so I can't use a ton of it, but what I decided to do was to layer it right here in the tails. So we're just going to kind of pour a little stripe of it right in there, so to speak. Just fill in both sides there. So we're just accenting the tails with it. Just right there in that section. So we'll do it on this side too. If I had more of this purple, I would add it in a few more different spots just so that we would have more of it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking I'll do with the purple. I already did it uh, to a couple other molds down here. And uh, you can never go wrong with some purple. That will kind of give these a little bit of like a brim or bluegill flavor just by adding a smidge of purple. So that is the next step. It's just a stripe, some purple right there in the tail section. All right, guys, as promised, here's the chartreuse section of the tails. So we're just gonna get one out here, make sure it's on camera, and we're just filling this in. Nothing too difficult or fancy. Just filling that section in with chartreuse. Very colorful tails here. Lots of stuff to look at. Kind of let it fill in a little bit. And boom, there we go. All right, I actually took some more of that chartreuse and just put it right up there in the tips of the noses. Whether that looks good or not, I guess we'll find out once these are done. All right, excuse Happy Jack, he's still here and he's worn out as welcome. All right, so I figured I might just take some of this red because I have to use it or I want to use it. There goes that lawnmower and just kind of splotch it in there, kind of like I did the uh, black. So just have, have just like some little random splotches of red happening. I don't know. And then I think I'm going to remelt the rest of the purple and try to use some more purple too. So. We'll throw a little bit of this red over here. And we're just gonna make these really colorful. Whether it looks natural or not, who knows. Just having fun with the new mold. So there's kind of what we have. Yeah, so we were actually able to squeeze enough purple out to fill in the wings with the purple. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take sort of that brown green pumpkin and then we're just going to kind of fill in some holes with it. So you see there's some down space, right? Or, or, or some uh, empty areas in these bodies. We're just going to kind of fill it in at random. And then we're going to use this or something else, I don't know, as like an actual capsule skin. And then we're going to fill that capsule in with white pearl. So these are definitely going to be colorful. Whether or not they'll look good, who knows. But I uh, was just trying to show you all a fun exciting way to use your remelt with a little bit more purpose than just throwing it all in the pot and hoping for the best. All right, so I was able to get everything kind of filled in and now we're just going to pour a body capsule. And then from there, yeah, hush up. Happy Jack's over here laughing, which, you know, I don't know what's so funny. Those, those worms he just poured were absolute, just awful. Anyway, and then we're gonna fill in the bodies with some white pearl. Then we're gonna fire them up on the griddle and hopefully these turned out. All right, now comes for probably the funnest part of this. It's just doing the body capsule. You basically just fill her up all the way. 
and pour it out. Just leaves that little skin all around it. Which there's a difference in skin pouring and capsuling. A lot of people confuse the two terms. What I'm doing now is capsuling. All the color placement that we've already done, that's skin pouring. So, wanna get your terminology down. Anyway, there we go. It's sort of a see-through charcoal. So, you won't really notice it a whole lot, but it'll add a little bit of depth. It's The whole thing is just about layers, depth. Even if it's a relatively see-through charcoal color, oh, that's still hot, it'll still add just a little bit of illusion to it. All right, everybody, now we're just gonna fill in the bodies with some white pearl. And it's just as simple as this right here. Just fill it up, done. What a uh, involved little project here. So yeah, there you go, looking kinda neat. And sort of the last step that in some ways is um, one of the trickiest steps is now we're firing the molds and what i mean by that is we need to thermally bond all of these different um, layers and, and and little splotches of color together because right now that plastic really isn't bonded so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to cook them it's just like it's just like baking a pie the raw ingredients are in there now we have to cook it together and really the way to do this is just to set your griddle on high and just keep an eye on it you'll kind of notice it starting to gel together. And basically, I'll just watch these till they just look like everything has melted together. Um, you know, that way the bait doesn't tear apart, it won't delaminate, and there's really no way to tell you how to do it other than you just have to sit here and watch it. And you'll kind of know when it's done. All right, those are actually starting to smooth out. If you look at this, you'll see, you can kind of see the, the, the lines between the colors, right? They don't look smooth. Those you can tell are starting to smooth out and that's just from the heat. All right, so the laundry noise finally took a break. Let's see how these look. Now, if, if you notice, that's what they look like kind of when they're melted and done. So lots of colors happening here. Let's go ahead and get one out. These are still kind of setting up. So we'll go ahead and get these wings started here. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, check it out. Eh. Now that's pretty cool. A little bit of everything going on there. Oh, it's warm in my hand too. <laughs> Look at that. A little glamour shot. In retrospect, I would have left the, the um, chartreuse out of the heads i would have not done that that's the only that's the only part of this that i'm a little iffy on oops yeah now they're in frame but that's super cool it's just nice to be able to place color wherever you want and just have unlimited options you know you can make them as complicated or simple as you want but hey that's that's a pretty good use of some remelt right there all right, and there we go. Kind of give you all a little 360 pan here. I'd say the tails are definitely my favorite part, just all the different layers. It, it reminds me of how I layer some swim baits. Yeah. You can see some of the coloring there in the bodies. And, uh, you know, I don't know, the chartreuse tips are actually growing on me a little bit, especially on the ones where it like really blended in with the black. So like I like that side better than that side without the black, if that makes sense. And the red is just so randomly in there. You know, if I was maybe pouring these without trying to use the remelt, and I actually did leave that green out. Uh, if you'll notice, one of the colors that I laid out earlier, I just didn't. I just didn't think it was going to fit in, so we left it out. And uh, this right here is is what we what we were left with really beautiful palette of colors and you know and this is just some remelt stuff so whenever you have that remelt laying around I'm not saying this is the sexiest pour ever but you know if you're willing to spend a little time you can turn that remelt into some cool stuff 
and I did not make these on film obviously but here's just another uh, I guess example of some craziness so I, I actually took some inspiration from a spiny lobster I think is what it's called particularly in that tail that's like exactly what their tails look like so yeah really cool stuff so we have quite a few crazy uh, pours hanging out on the table today but um, just kind of wanted to show y'all another example of something that I did uh, along with the uh, remelt madness from this video so even though we really only made one thing today question which ones are your favorite do you like the red crawl looking things the real bright ones from today's video or these Miami Dolphins uh, lobsters that's what that's called it's called Miami Dolphins lobster we're about to end this video with a little bit of lunch it is the next day and it's firehouse subs time large Italian on white only sandwich to get I don't want to hear any comments below talking about other sandwiches <laughs>